Hello Calc Kids, welcome back to another lesson in Calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today we're going to focus in on how to find the area that's bounded by a polar graph, just a single polar graph, not multiple ones. That's our next lesson. Before we jump into it, let's remember something we learned in geometry, and that is the area of a sector of, uh, of a circle. So if you took a circle and just took a little piece of pie out of it, like a little slice out of it, what is the area of this thing? That area is one half theta r squared, where theta is the in central angle here from the center of your circle. And then this is just the radius of the circle. So that's all it is. If you remember that, then today's lesson, that's basically what we're doing. We're just gonna throw in some calculus. But the shapes we're gonna look at are not just slices of a circle. If it was that, then we wouldn't even need the calculus. It's when you have something that maybe looks kind of crazy like this, you have some curving to it, and you're trying to figure out what is the area of this piece here. So first let's write this down. Let's say that my r is going to be some function in terms of theta. So that's f of theta. So r is going to equal f of theta. If that's the case, then this length right here would be, the radius would be f of alpha. So we're gonna use Greek letters here. I know mathematicians make things confusing. We typically use Greek letters when we're talking about the angles. So we have angle theta. This is angle alpha. This is angle beta. So in other words, from here, from your, uh, from your starting point, that angle here is alpha, and then the entire angle is beta. So the radius of any given sector, so let's draw this. Let's just, let's graph a little sector. So I have, I'm gonna draw a little line there and a little line here. You probably can't see that very well. So this is just one little sector based at my origin point. And then I could draw another sector that comes off like this and then another sector. And what I could do is just try and find the area of each of these sectors. Oh, that's supposed to be a straight line. Okay, so we're gonna do a whole bunch of different little sectors, find the area of each one of those, and that will help us figure out the area of the whole thing. So every single one of these tiny little sectors that I'm drawing, each of those lines has its own r. And the value of r would be f of theta at that particular line. So we're just gonna call it the little subset i there, just represents that they all have different angles. That's all that is. Every little one of those sectors, those little slices, they have an angle that is equivalent to this. You do beta minus alpha. So you have the beta angle, subtract the alpha angle, that gives you this whole thing, and you divide by how many tiny little sectors you have. So how many little slices you're doing, that's the number of slices you have. That gives you your delta theta. Delta theta represents the change in theta. So it's every single one of those will have the exact same um, amount of angle. They're equivalent. So then that leads us to, we can figure out what is the area if we were to add up all of those little slices, it would give us this. We would have summation notation because we're adding them all up. So we would have one half theta r squared. One half theta r squared. That's what we have here. And then the i is going from one to n. n represents how many little slices we have. So we, we can do one slice or we could have n slices, a whole bunch of different slices. So then if we say, well, what if we want to say that we're going to push those number of slices all the way up to infinity? So then what do we get? We get this little thing here. It's exactly the same thing I'd wrote, written down here, but we're now going to use the calculus of saying that the limit of the number of slices that we're creating is going to approach infinity. And this is where that leads us to our expression for finding the area with a polar curve because this actually is the definition of integration. When we go back to the beginning of unit six, we did some things with integration and this looks just like that. Okay, so I've moved things around. Yeah, the one half is outside this. It could be on the inside or the outside. It doesn't really matter. But that, So get that written down if you don't have it yet. And this is the important part. The one half alpha to beta r squared d theta. This is the area of a polar, of the area bounded by a polar graph. And again, this one half, we could have put it on the inside of the integration, but it's constant, so it comes out. But the, the hardest things about this are remembering the one half. Oh, let's make that bigger. Remembering the one half and then remember trying to figure out what is alpha and what is beta. Those are the hardest parts of this. Okay, so I'm just gonna help you practice figuring out this alpha and beta, and you just gotta remember how to get that one half. So here we go. I know right now that it's going to be area is going to equal one half integrate I have my alpha and my beta and then my r squared. And I know that's gonna be five sine theta. And then I'm squaring it with respect to theta. So I already have the whole thing set up. The only thing I now need is my alpha and my beta. And then I'm gonna use a calculator to just plug this in. So what is that? 
well, I have to know where am I starting and stopping on this graph? How do I get a boundary? So what I do know is that point right there, the radius, the R, the distance from the origin would be zero. So I'm trying to figure out when does that happen? So I'm gonna take this and say zero equals five sine theta, and then I can solve it. So zero equals sine, and then that leaves me with theta equals. When does sine equal zero? If you think through a unit circle, that's gonna happen at when the angle is zero. It's also gonna happen again at pi. It's gonna happen again at two pi, and then again at three pi, and so forth. So it just kind of continues on that pattern. So what do I wanna use for my boundaries? Do I go from zero to pi, pi to two pi, zero to two pi? So that's a little bit of a trick here to figure out. So my suggestion to be able to figure this out kind of quickly is, if you just recognize this from polar graphs, you're gonna know the answer right away. And I, I will tell you, it's this first one where it's zero. It starts off as zero and then it goes around and th this is the very first time it comes back to zero. So that's gonna be the next one. It's gonna go from zero to pi. But let me show you on a calculator how you can figure that out. So make sure your mode is in polar graph. I'm gonna do a polar graph here. I'm gonna graph just this five sine of theta. Now, if I graph this, my graph's probably gonna be all wonky. Yeah, let's, do, let's check my window on here. I'm gonna go from zero, and then my maximum theta is gonna be pi, because I'm only going from zero to pi. But then I need to fix this. So what does this graph look like? My x min, one, two, three. Negative three is fine. Let's go positive three, and then let's just do a y max of about five or so. Okay, so I can see the whole thing. Now, what the heck's going on here? That's not a circle. Well, let's square it up. Do the zoom, and then I can square it. Option five will square it. There, that's nice. Okay, so I have my graph here. So as you can see, if I chose my window of zero to pi, it did do a circle. Now, if I go back to my window and I said two pi instead, if I did z zero to uh, two pi, like that, hit enter and then graph it, it will look exactly the same. You can't tell the difference. But if I did on my window, if I did half of pi, if I only went from zero to half a pi, like this, hit enter and graph it. Okay, now I see I'm only getting half the circle. So that shows me I need to go from zero to pi. If you don't do these right, you will have the wrong answer. So if I said, uh, oh, let me write down the answer to this. So area is approximately, and I would just use a calculator on this. Don't, don't stress about trying to figure out this without the calculator. 19.634 if you truncated, uh, or five if you were rounding. I'm showing you that it goes to nine. So if I said two pi from zero to two pi, that would actually be doing two circles. You'd go around once to pi and then around again. So it would be twice as big. It would be counting the area of two circles. And so you wanna be careful about that, uh, making sure you get those correct boundaries. All right, let's do another one. So again on this one, I'm trying to figure out just this shaded region this time. So I'm not doing both, I'm doing only this one. This is, uh, oh, what's this thing called again? Lima, Lima, I forget what it's called. Not a limacon. Oh, my mind's gone blank. Whatever this thing's called. Okay, we're trying to find the area of this. So I'm again going, a lot of these will be very similar where I'm looking for when is it, the radius gonna be zero? When is it crossing the origin? So I'm gonna say, when is that thing a zero? And if I solve for that, I subtract the one, you get negative one, and then divide by that negative, you get one equals cosine two theta. And so when does cosine equal one? That happens when the two theta would have to be, so on the unit circle, that's right here on the right side. It's right at the very beginning. So when the two theta would have to equal zero, or I'd go around in a full circle, I get two pi. Go around in another circle, I get four pi, and so forth. It continues that pattern. So then the theta would have to be zero pi, two pi. So again, and then it just continues that pattern. So what is the limits that I want? Area equals one half, don't forget the one half. One half from so we're going to start off here at zero, and it should just be that it goes around in a circle and comes back here to pi. And then it goes back around here and comes back there, and then it's at two pi. So it should just be from zero to pi, but I'm going to check on my calculator after I write this down just to double check. And then I have from one minus cosine of two theta, and then that whole thing is squared with respect to theta. So before I do this, let's again, I'm going to check it in my calculator. So I've got my one minus cosine two theta, and then for the window, I'm gonna force it to go from zero to pi. So this one, I want to say, there we go, zero to pi. Graph it. And yes, we've got just the top part of this graph, so that's perfect. So now I can use that, second quit, and then this is where you do the math nine stuff. Math nine, and plug in everything you need. Just don't forget when you're done, it's half of the answer, right? Because you have this one half, so be careful about that. Once you do all that, then the answer comes out that A is, I'm gonna say it's approximately 
2.356. I already did this ahead of time, so I'd have the numerical answers here. Let's save ourselves some time on the video. All right, so there's that one. Let's do another one. Now we're doing the inner loop of this limacon, limacon, limacon. I don't know how to say it. It's French. Limacon. So we're doing just this little tiny little blurb right here. And so again, we're going to be figuring out when is the radius a zero because that's what's going to bound it as we're going around in a circle. So let's say this thing is a zero. If we subtract the one, divide by two, we get a negative one half equals cosine theta. And then when does that happen? So uh, let's look, think about my unit circle here. When do you get a negative one half? That's going to be at this angle and at this angle. So that is at when theta is 2 pi over 3, and then again at 4 pi over 3. There's my two spots where that cosine theta would equal negative 1 half. So area equals 1 half. Don't forget the 1 half. Set it up as, and it should just be 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And then the radius squared to cosine theta plus 1 square it d theta. And then I'm going to, before I do all the work of calculating this out, I want to verify that that's what my graph looks like. So there's my graph, 2 cosine theta plus 1. Check my window. I want the, th the minimum theta to be 2 pi over 3. So there we go. And then 4 pi over 3 for my maximum theta. So minimum to maximum, hit my enter. There we go. And graph that thing. And yes, good, perfect. I have that tiny little inside loop of this whole graph. So that works. So this would be correct. And then you can jump straight to the answer, plug it in the calculator, and you get this as your answer, 0.543 or 0.544 if you were rounding up. And that's this tiny little area right there. All right, just one more problem and then we're all finished. So here we go. We're gonna find the area of one petal of this rose curve here. We've got three cosine of three theta and we need to figure out when in the world is this thing gonna be right there at the origin. So let's do that. Let's take this radius is a zero, the R is a zero, divide by three and we get zero equals cosine of three theta. And then when does that happen? That happens when three theta is equal to cosine equals zero at the top and at the bottom of our unit circle. So that's gonna happen at pi over two, three pi over two, and let's keep going. Five pi over two, seven pi over two, and it would just keep going around in a circle over and over and over again. So then that leads us to theta would equal, we get pi over six, dividing by, divide each of these by three. Three pi over six, well that's just, or you could just say pi over two. Five pi over six, seven pi over six, and so forth. So now the question is, where is this starting? So this one, I'm used to these curves. I know how this works. So this is the starting point and it's gonna come around here. So when it's first getting to the origin right there at pi over six, and then it's gonna trace down here and come back around. And then it's gonna be there at three pi over six. So what we're trying to figure out is one petal. So if when it's coming around here, that pi over six is the starting point. And then if you want that curve right there, that little petal would be from pi over six to three pi over six. So we can say that the area is going to be from pi over six to three pi, oh, I can just not say three pi over six, let's just say pi over two, that's easier, pi over two, uh, and then the r squared, so three cosine of three theta, quantity squared with respect to theta. Now let's check that on the calculator just to make sure we did that right. Go to my y equals, plug that little thing in. There we go, now let's check the window. And I wanna go only from pi over six until we get to pi over two. So from pi over six to pi over two, there's that. If I graph it, yes, I'm getting just that little piece down there. Yeah, I could, I should, I could push it down if I wanted to see everything on the y minimum. Go down a little bit further there. So I've got just that one little petal of this entire rose curve. So then you can say the ant, this is set up correctly. And then so then the answer would be 2.356, and yes, that's the answer for a problem we did earlier. That's just a coincidence that they happen to be exactly the same answer for that. Uh, and so what you'll find on the AP exam is that you'll do problems like this, and many times it'll be a multiple choice where you just have to identify the correct setup. So you'd have to figure out of the answers that they give, which one would be represented of just one of the pedals. So that's a kind of a common problem that you might see. All right, we've covered it all. So rock that mastery check and I'll see you back for our last lesson of unit nine coming up next.